Was haben wir uns für heute vorgenommen? Quickly planned for today. We've got a very short disclaimer at the beginning. We will quickly explain what a MOOC is. Then we will explain what our targets with the MOOC are. That is the objectives of the organizational team. Uh, everybody has got her or his own targets, but we'll explain why we have been doing it. We will explain the preparations, how the weeks will look like, and also the infrastructure for the MOOC. Okay, and to start, a short thanks for the uh, LAN OS community. These are the volunteers who are generating the guide for the 21st century for learning in the 21st century. So I would like to thank the team of the guide, Benedict Doris, Ellen, Oliver, Hans, Marcel Moritz, Oliver, Simon, Stefan, Susan, Thilo, Thomas, Ute and me, and then also the support LernOS supporters, supporting LernOS, Bayernwerk, Datev, Deutsche Telekom, LV1871, SAP, Siemens, Healthline and Vitesco. And for the thank you to be properly recorded, could you please open your mics and just give us an audio applause, because that's always nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, and there's been gradation. Virtual applause has also been shown, but I think that in real life this is always nicer. But you know that the microphones are filtering out these noises. Yes, but I've received quite a good applause. I will mute all of you now. There might have been one or the other with an open mic. And Doris, please, could you then unmute me? Okay, and what we do not want to have or to see is that your legal department comes to us and says, you are luring our employees into using tools that are not allowed. So you have to check that you see what you can use, which tools and which data. I don't know which data you are copying into AI. So if you apply to and register to specific services and upload um, data, then you have to be aware that this might end up in clouds and also clouds that are US-based. So be cautious and make sure that you are doing the right one. Then for those who know classic learning formats, so you sit at a seminar and everything is prepared bit by bit, this is not what's happening in a MOOC. MOOC is self-organized and this is we as an organizational team are quite lazy, so we've got five live sessions uh, week by week, and your learning is self-organized. So this is why we suggest that you do not do it all by yourself, but at least you should be two or maybe three or four or five getting together to do this. And that's the end of the disclaimer. Okay, what is a MOOC? A MOOC is the abbreviation of Mathis Open Online Course. This is quite old or a bit older as a format. I think it was in 2010 and New York Times uh, said that 2012 was the year of the MOOC. If you dissolve or look behind the letters, then this is massive. Many, many people participate. Right now we have uh, 540, usually not that many participate in the seminar. Open, everybody can participate. There are no restrictions. It's free of charge and even somebody who would like to now jump on to this could do this so on the first MOOC that we had 2013 then throughout the course of the MOOC people joined throughout the uh, development and it's mainly taking place on the internet this is the second o online and with regard to the activity that difference is so for a new topic where everybody will just do the first steps and learning something their interactivity between the others has to be promoted and exchange of experience so one might know a gps or prop builder how this is prompted and we learn together the quickest the more of we can participate in the parts and experience of others. This could be in a smaller circle, on chats or uh, social networks, uh, internally, yes, and uh, Mastodon, um, LinkedIn, whatever you prefer. And what might be important to add is that the MOOCs that you knew, that Coursera and edX, these are X MOOCs 
and X stands for the transfer. These are more MOOCs which prepare a lot of content. You watch videos and you might do a multiple choice test at the end, but they are not really focusing on interaction. They are lectures that had been filmed and just to be able to, to scale it up, so tens of thousands might participate. And the others are C MOOCs or constructive MOOCs. And I think Job Stevens was the first who called them this one and Stephen Dowers, I think. And this is about bringing people together and allowing them to exchange and networking. And our MOOC is clearly a CMOOC. So we want community activities. We want to see exchange via networks. And this also beyond the MOOCs. And Stephen Dowers says what Marcel said in the chat. Thank you very much. So what are our goals? Well, the organizational team for the MOOC, well, we believe that prompting is a future skill. And it had been discussed a couple of months ago whether CNN should uh, in study prompt engineering. I think it's not that complex, but like being able to Google and writing texts well. Prompting is a skill that we're not yet used to and which is different whether you prompt text or whether it's graphics, AIs. And this is our target. That is, we want to broadly ex well, convey this skill of prompting. And if we th think about of the German-speaking countries, our resource is knowledge. We don't have any diamonds, gold, or precious stones. The knowledge is the resource that we uh, use, and it's very good if we all use the generative AI in a good way. And we all would like you to do a little piece of work that is generated or produced with generative AI. And for those who had participated in our Promptaton, there they had a day to produce something like this, but you now will have a couple of weeks. And these pieces of work show then, especially if you explain how this has been done, then you can show how it works, how it's done, and then you can really learn from others. And then you can just say, okay, I don't have to reinvent it. I can just check how the others have been doing it. And as the manual or the guide is new, so if you see any mistakes, if there's anything that's not been explained very well or a resource which should be added, give us a feedback so we will give you feedback sheets and forms and you can also add feedback on the pages of this guide so then you could add sources or just give a comment. I just check at Doris, is there anything? Well, apart from good, adding good links and uh, good sources. This is already up and running. So in the chat, there are some informational links. So you can also have a look at this as well. What is funny is that always we get the message that the spoken language changes. Now it's English, then it switches to German. This is a bit irritating, but we stay in German. And as for those who've come later, unfortunately, the simultaneous interrupting didn't work as we intended. But so our language is German and now it's indicated as German. I don't know why this is happening or what it's all about. One person asked in the chat where the prompted on people. So from the uh, learning community prompted on, there were good examples. And these are the links that we will certainly also include during the week to come. In the screen share at the bottom, you see that there are little exercises starting. Katrin Mentele really visualized this very nicely in a sketch. Now, this is exactly, or these are the exercises that you uh, well, see and which will guide you through the learning path for the weeks to come. So what can you do to pre prepare? Well, if you haven't done so yet, then please enter the live session dates and the calendar. And in the presentation, I will also put the link in the chat. That is what I show you right now is a web presentation, which is openly accessible. And just a second, I think that would make sense to directly put this into the chat. Okay, it's already included. Oh, yeah, uh, this is my job. Oh, you're so fast. That's great, Doris. Okay, so you can click through this. There's an ICS file. And with one click, you can uh, enter all these dates into your calendar. And 
on meetup.com you would also have the link and the team's link for all uh, meetings in MOOC is the same. So if you've got the link once, then it will always allow you to join again. The MOOC map, and I will just go there. This is a small map to visualize where all these learning parties come from. Uh, we had 109 when we started earlier on. Now it's 141. Maybe this tool is starting to struggle a bit. The scrolling is a bit uh, slower. So you can check whether there's anybody who's close by or is there anybody who's looking for somebody. So when you swipe with the mouse over a name, then you get information, then you get a picture. If you want to, you can upload it. You don't have to use any real names. You can just invent something. And if you want people to contact you, as Sabrina did it here, then you just put a link as to how one can get in touch with you. I wouldn't really put my mobile phone number there, just something which also provides a bit of a protective wall. So you could here, for example, LinkedIn and Mastodon have been chosen. Okay, and looking at this, it's quite interesting to see. Well, it doesn't scroll fast enough, but here in Peru, that's Maria. Maria is currently in Peru, but she wants to join this MUG from Peru, probably together with colleagues here from China. These are probably the largest distances that we've seen so far. Thus, I'm no longer the southernmost participant. What a pity. Yes, that's true. Mallorca has been the southernmost uh, location for a long time, but that's no longer the case. Okay, so uh, that was information. Optionally, LearnOS con community has uh, or stages the LearnOS convention once per year, 2nd and 3rd of July at the Kaiserberg in Nuremberg. And the whole first uh, day, we've got a range of lightning talks and the experience of the MOOC will then also be shown there in smaller contributions and it really makes sense and it's really nice to come together and exchange uh, experience so if you uh, if that interests you have a click on this link and have a look now for the MOOC itself it always every Monday from 1300 to 14 we'll have a live session apart from the 20th and 27th of May and now you might wonder why are they taking Meetup? Well, the reason is that I could only start the series on meetup.com and then it wasn't really clear whether you can really erase individual dates and already 50 had been registering and this is why I said, oh, I don't want to dare this and this is why you have to live with two dates uh, that are available on meetup.com, but there will be no live sessions. And the reason is that Bavaria has school holidays. Mm, I don't know about the other countries, how they have positioned their holidays, but it might be a good idea because that allows you to have a break and to catch up. And then each week, uh, the guide will give you basics and exercises and uh, we will have a look at these uh, basics and then in line with dojos we have these cutters dojos are the practice halls in martial arts or meditation for example in martial arts what you need to do do you get uh, a green belt these are the cutters those exercises or practices and then you get a set to basics and exercises to look at and we try to make sure that they're not only text but also podcasts and others and if you're a solo learner if you do it all by yourself then you need a bit of time that is if you do it all by yourself i would say one to two hours roughly speaking this is what you should allocate to this per week and if you participate in a learning circle then it makes sense working out loud format or whatever um that is have an hour to meet and one hour to study all by yourself so one hour to uh, exchange and very often one somehow doesn't know how to continue and then you get together in the circle and then suddenly you see that somebody else understood the question that you still had and so for the flow of learning it's really good to meet and also the perspectives you see because it's so precious 
You see, because when we look at a chapter ourselves, then we've got our world and our perspective to look at this chapter. And in this exchange session, you have access to other worlds and other perspectives. And I've been working through Learn OS guides all by myself. Uh, and then we'll never do it again because in a team, it's so much more valuable and so much more fun. Okay, we always say this, but some prefer to start all by yourself. And if you start all by yourself and then you say, oh, I would like to have some others participating, then maybe there are some options to um, get into a learning circle. Okay, now I will start here. We are here at week one and you can already see week one has Catters and topics in the web presentation. Everything that you see here in orange is linked. So then you will be uh, linked to the guide. I think somebody asked Petra in Q&A, where is the LearnOS AI guide? I will show this in more detail in a moment. But here, the web presentation week one, if you look here at, at AI models, then I'm immediately on the respective page. And the same is true here for the exercises, so katas, so kata zero. This is just for the initialization of the first week. That is to start up with a circle and to discuss what one would like to learn. So this is an initiating right, a classical one. So here you've got the links and on the last um, for a slide of this presentation, you will get an overview of the links. Now, these learning groups and tandems and the diversity, uh, so I put the three apps, one prefers to try out things, others prefer to read, and one might have a technical affinity. So this diversity and mixture in a group really helps that one can really learn much quicker. And especially this combination of doing it by yourself alone and then bring it into uh, a joint group meeting. This is why we put here two ideas. One is learning tandems or learning circles are a good idea. And learning circles are usually group sizes of four to five. For example, if you are here from an organization, then you could uh, uh, call up on something like this on uh, enterprise social networks um, or social networks or Mastodon. And there are two platforms that I would like to mention, platforms to create circles. And Leonid, has, Leonid wanted to have a look at it. Leonid, are you there? You wanted to join? And I will already go to one of these. Yes, we have 579, but 580 participating uh, members, but I can't search because I'm only linked to this meeting from externally. So should Leonid uh, join us? Or if you've seen Leonid, then please ping him because he could join me then. So I here now looked, uh, went into PeerFinder, PeerFinder.app, and just to look at this. So here I have a learning server offer, a stable diffusion prompter. This is how I called it, because uh, stable diffusion prompter, uh, this is local uh, graphics KI, AI. And then others can join and say, oh, okay, I would like to uh, participate. So it would start today. Location is still open. Language is German. And then a short description as to what is happening here. And on the right hand side, you see that the circle has five members. So people have joined. And here at the top, well, it happened at the morning. So Sylvia is asking, I would like to participate. But I don't know whether my laptop is uh, sufficiently equipped. And then I could just confirm. And then Sylvia would also be part of the circle. A peer finder group offers a very slim infrastructure, lean infrastructure, which is sufficient for many circles. So I've got a very small chat at the bottom, which you see here and here at the right hand side. When I go off managing group, I can also bookmarks, for example, the link to a guide, or I can organize a date or 
uh, upload a date. So there's a small calendar and then single use links uh, to Zoom or WebEx or whatever. So for many, I think this is a sufficient circle infrastructure. The question that we got, is the number of circle members limited to five? No, it doesn't have to be. Well, if you know the story for the working out loud circles were the lean in circles and they recommend 12 to 14. And John Stabbard said at the time, if you only have got one hour of time per week and if you really want to exchange some content, everybody should have the possibility to say something, then 12 to 14 are far too much. And I don't know whether four to five were empirically proven by his Deutsche Bank experience, but Moritz just put it in the shed four to five or or maybe six, because somebody might drop out of the circle who no longer has got the time. But this is quite a good size, I would say, where you've got enough sufficient diversity, but where everybody can also really show his or her perspective. And synchronizing uh, the calendars are much, much easier, especially if you're not within one organization, but when you come from different areas and organizations, then to organize five people, it's much, much easier. And then one hour fits. Because for us, it is important. If we, whenever we take the time of five hours, then we should really be able to cover everything. And with five people, that's really e well done. Okay, in the chat, I just saw it. how many groups are already there. When you start with the peer finder circles, the hashtag I have uh, KI MOOC, uh, you click onto this, then you see all the circles that exist for this hashtag. There are two, mine, uh, two which are open. I think one should say that these are only the old ones. Yeah, that's correct, because a circle which has already been closed is no longer visible here. Okay, so if you want to start a new group, then you just go click onto new group, then you choose Learn OS Circle. You can give a name to your learning circle. I really like, think it's quite nice, a group with a name. So you can say what you want to do or what the topic is, or it could also be a fun name. And then here, this is where you would put your tag. And then you would say when it starts, how many members, maximum number. And I think Felix told me that they are meeting at a library in their at their location. Most probably will meet virtually, then you would tick that box. Or you could also generate a Jitsi link if you want this for exchange. You can determine which languages. So very little data that you actually need. And then you press the button and then the circle is available on the circle marketplace. What is important? Well, this marketplace is one, but the link should then uh, be spread to your target group via LinkedIn Mastodon just to get the people. And Doris, I think this is what you meant, the private group, if you tick that box, then it will not appear in the overview. Yes, but also if it's already closed. For example, if you do this with a company, or I also did it that from my network, there will be five people getting together, but I don't want everybody to just join, then I can set it to private. But just be courageous and, well, work with people whom you haven't met yet. And then a colleague said, we use an open Teams channel. So Teams, obviously, if you work within an organization, then it's very good. Group chat Teams or a whole team, because then you've got video conference included. And Teams also offers open channels. So you could also get people on board which are outside of the organization via the chat channel. But then obviously this would have to be allowed by your organization. Make sure that you uh, uh, stay within what is permitted. And maybe for those who are on Teams, Marcel, I think you also have the guide in a OneNote version and we would make the link available so that the guide could also be used in form of OneNote because I just saw you on the screen. Could you tell us a bit about this? Yes, there's a template that we have prepared internally for the learning version, which we have at Conti. And uh, I have an exchange with Hannes, so you will get it quite quickly. So he created the OneNote template together with another colleague. And yeah, this should actually be passed on to you.
That's cool. Well, I didn't check all the uh, recent mails because I didn't check my mails in the morning because there was so much work ongoing. But on the uh, path guide, I would then put it on and also under the Mastodon hashtag. So it's nice to have a version available if you're using these tools where you can immediately put in comments and notes. Yes, we also offered uh the option to find groups on the pad on the overview side and if you are on learn or as discord server where you have looking for and offering and people also started looking for groups there yes i will show this i've got an infrastructure page with all the links but i will just move downwards because there are two specialties that i would like to draw your attention to the first specialty uh, this is what i already mentioned so 20 and 25 there are no live sessions ah yeah here i entered it so florian could you open your mic if you are there because ah yeah you're there okay so florian mindgpt.com they were on the learning camp of corporate learning community and he did a workshop where they presented their tool which supports prompting and Florian uh, offered an option to do this also in the MOOC. I think the session as well as the offer were great. So on the 6th of June from 3 to 5 p.m. and we'll put this on and Florian could you tell us a bit what people are to expect in this workshop. Thank you. I think that's the largest Teams meeting in my life, which I've participated. So it's really a great to participate in this MOOC today. I'm the founder of the startup MindGPT. So this is, we support AI's uh, introduction in small and medium-sized companies. And we would like to help everybody in prompting and, and AI use. And we've got an interactive learning platform that we created where live during the session, we will then perform specific tasks. So you will write emails, you will generate plans, and you can do this immediately on the platform and an AI coach will give you feedback as to how you can improve your prompts. This is a concept which will allow to bring AI closer to many, many employees and our developers are just doing the low test so that potentially 600 people in parallel could be uh, managed and we are programming this and we are really very, very interested to see this. So two hour sessions, one hour is live training, pure live training, and we've got different trainers on board and we'll answer questions. And for those, all of you who've got a bit of experience and those who do not have any experience, you get a guided access to this. I'm very interested in doing this and look forward to the feedback. Well, we thank you very much. This is a great offer. That is a structured way of learning. So a huge, huge virtual applause to you. So this is one point that had been special. Now I jump to week five, and that might be interesting for people who are within the Nuremberg vicinity. On the 21st of June, we have our Knowledge Jam date and the Cognian Academy. So whoever would like, so from they can come to Nuremberg from 10 to a.m. to 4 p.m. Also a possibility to meet a circle. And from 1 to 2 p.m. we have an official closure of the MOOC. Just as we've got the opening session today, we will then have a very beautiful joint closing session. But uh, and I think you can already register for this. Okay, somebody, I didn't do it. So if you click onto this, you can already register. This is our community platform where you can participate. I think we've got space for 30 to 35 people. And then we would have the closing session with live audience. Okay, then I come to the last chart. And here I've collected all the links that you need. So should change anything. Well, you got informational mails, which we send out via meetup.com. So here, informational pages on KI MOOC. So here at the top, that's the link to the slides. 
And here you can have a look at the slides. And we will rework this so that the other dates will also appear and come up. So should there be any changes um, in dates, then meetup.com will inform you about this. That is an email from meetup.com. This is the single point of truth. Then the guides, the links are here. So we always have web-based versions. So this is the start pin page of the German guide. So on the left-hand side, you've got the navigation and on the basics, you've got all the basic information of foundations. So in the week when we come, to looking at the uh, development of AA, then you can read this. These are responsive pages, so on iPad, smartphone, or on whatever device you'd like, you can read them and look at them. And then there are learning paths, uh, chapters with the cutters, and you see there are 13 in total, because these learning paths are usually designed for one quarter, but now uh, in order to complete this for the convention, the Learn OS convention, we compress this a bit and uh, we will also cover all, however, cover all the exercises you need. And GPT, the, the link is uh, not with B, what, but with P. Okay. And here there's something special. You see the content is written in a neutral language, markdown, uh, not interesting, but we generate the guides out of this. And here under download, you can also get a PDF version or a Word version if you like, or if you want to copy and wiki, then HTML. And who is uh, sitting uh, on a balcony and has a Kindle reader can also get the ebook. So just to tell you that we've got different formats and I hope that one or the other suits you. And Marcel and Promptin, if we get the 180G, then I would add this here as well and also send you an informational email. One warning. Uh, on the basic present uh, further information. Here we collected uh, books, studies, courses, websites, and so on. But uh, so here, if you look, there is no time limitation. There are videos which are longer than one hour. So we will see this in the learn path because we give you things, this is a newsletter or a YouTube channel that I've subscribed to, that is to be up to date beyond this MOOC. And here in this page, I can just show you. So on each page of the guide, you've got at the bottom the comments. So the reaction you can say or show, I liked it, I didn't like it, thumbs up, thumbs down. In difference to LinkedIn, there's not just the thumbs up. But if the chapter was shit, then you can give us a thumbs down. And if um, for vlogs there's some missing, then you can add these in the comment. For this, you need a GitHub account. This is something that you have to do once, then you can really enter this. And the advantage is that the guide team will immediately see your information and can also adapt this. Two further points. There's a search at the top. So if somebody says, somebody said Lama, then you can enter Lama. And then you see the pages where Lama occurs and you get to the appropriate lo site or location. And here from Wikipedia, here you've got the language switch. So I think that this is a Chinese symbol and you click to English. Then the same what you've seen beforehand is now in an English and also the downloads and PDF versions and ebook would then also be available in English. And a small disclaimer, yeah, DeepL is uh, machine translation, so no natives read it. And again, if you see something that looks a bit strange then or wrong, then please let us know. So these are the guides and comments. Yeah, put them directly at the bottom of the page into the comment. Uh, so then on Discord, we have a chat channel, which is a general 
chat for MOOC. I don't know those who use this code. I can show this to you in a moment. So should there be any questions? Do you, should you need any help? If there's any topic coming up, we don't have any email addresses or telephone numbers. It's self-organized, but we wanted to offer a place, a space where help to self-help is possible. So if somebody's got a question and somebody else knows the answer or solution to that, then I uh, will just move my Discord over. So this is how it looks like. A bit like looks a bit like Teams or Slack. And if you follow the introductory link, then here you've got the LearnOS KI MOOC. That's the Discord server general um, channel. And Johnny says, hoo hoo, hi Johnny. So you can also give reactions and I can give him a thumbs up, for example. And then separately, because we assumed that there will be quite a lot of traffic, especially in the first week, we also have this channel of I offer, I need. So a peer finder, for example, if you want to find peers, then you could also put this here. And Sophie, uh, just asked through question and answers for this group. Have a look at this because there are a few people who are offering learning circles and somebody else also asked in A and I whether you can participate in different learning circles. So there are different channels, many different channels to find a learning circle. So a MOOC out of experience, I would say, is very lively within the first week and a lot of it's happening and then it comes down, I would say. Okay, I just wanted to show you here, uh, building learning circles. Uh, Pat, have you posted this? Yes. Somebody did, yeah. So just scroll up, yeah. So here on this one landing page, uh, and here the source of truth, where you also have a pad where a search uh, could be entered. And my circle now is full, so I will change copy. And here a lot of wild things are happening. We have to check this. But this is another possibility for you to use it as a marketplace and to get together. Okay, the chat channel, that was number four. And then it's interesting, once you've learned things, it would be nice if you share them. And we use on LinkedIn uh, the hashtag KIMOOC24. And many do not know that LinkedIn has hashtags. So here with uh, this pound key, uh, you can use this to link it. So this is, for example, what I did. I posted where I'm sitting right now. And Sven said he's a participant. And we can see him here. And then here, I defollowed, but you could follow the hashtag. And if you follow the hashtag, then you would get all the new entries in your normal timeline on LinkedIn. And this is a medium that we will post uh, novelties. The second one is Mastodon. And there again, we created this hashtag. So if you use Mastodon and social co-learning, this is a bit the successor of Twitter, we could say. So if you use Mastodon, then you can follow us. And there's also a LearnOS account where Florian's and MindGPT session has been announced. And again, here it's on the upper right hand corner, you can follow or defollow. And we also have a small master wall and you've got the link in the presentation for this. So licking, clicking onto this, well, you have to wait a bit to allow it to sort it. Maybe from Twitter, you know, the tweet walls where chronologically backward, they show all the posts with the hashtag. And you see Holger here uh, using his highly modern board. And uh, then you can really have a look at the different posts. That's it. And the last point from my side, and then we come to questions and answers. Whatever time we choose for live sessions, there's always one or the other who might have a department meeting or no time for whatever reason. And this is why we record this. And all recordings, all five recordings will be in our YouTube playlist. And this is the link for it. So for the time being, we only have the announcement. So this is what you see here. This is the announcement video and our song for the MOOC. And 
then the session of today, the dubbed version with Eng in English, and all following sessions will then be uploaded here. So we've covered everything, and we've got almost 15 minutes time for questions. And Doris has probably sorted them in Q&A and knows which ones still need to be answered.